What's going on, folks? Start the day off. We are in the vehicle. You know why? We actually went to the store. We were going to jump out. I was about to jump out and shoot. And then we're like, hey, we're hungry. Let's get some food. So we got Taco Juan's, folks. And uh, Zach over here's never had it. You've never had Taco John's. Never See, even heard what's of crazy it. is like growing up, I thought Taco John's was like just a, like a McDonald's. Like everybody had them. And you're like, what's that place? I'm like, Taco John's. You ever heard of Taco John's? He's like, no, it's Taco John's. I'm like, you gotta have Taco John's. So those are potato. And you didn't even know I ordered these for you, but they're no. potato olays. That's what they're when called. You, when I heard you say that, I thought you were talking about like Lay's chips. Oh, Lay's. Oh, that's what yeah. the was. Yeah, no, oh, Lay's. <laughs> and then they've got some cheese sauce. So if you guys don't have, so you're South Carolina, don't have North them. Carolina. North Carolina don't have them. I mean, I've never heard of it. Oklahoma don't have them. The Did you Maybe have them? in Oklahoma. Maybe in Oklahoma. I wasn't sure like where they lived, I guess. I'd essentially. Say it's more of a Midwest thing. I think it's I more, more Midwest. So it's like, I like Taco Bell better. I do, but these are kind of game changers. So you, you go ahead and just give her. Dunk. Give her a dunk ski. See what you think. It's pretty much the only reason why I ever come to this joint is just to get those things. Oh, oh yeah. Fire. Yeah, that's that's the deal. But Taco Bell ain't got nothing on those. You're a big, big fan of the Olays then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're good stuff. Well, we are at Orshelin's. We've got to go in and we are getting some fish food and we are getting some grain and maybe some other stuff. And then we are going to pick up some minners and take them back. And we are going to feed, hand feed the fish in the mini pot. We had not done it yet. We've given them a couple minnows here and there, but we've never seen them like whoop, whoop, and strike. The allergies kind of calmed down a little bit. The pond's really low though. We got to fill it up with water. So we might do that as well. Fill it with water and then we're going to feed them and whatnot. We have some other stuff to do. The chores come first. We got to fill up the fish feeders for the cabin pond and for the backyard pond. Now uh, we got to get some grain and then feed the animals. And then we'll go to the mini pond and give them some little minners. But first we're going to eat some lunch and then we'll see you guys inside Orchlands. Stay tuned. Shoo! We made it, folks. We are ready. I don't, well, oh, we're looking for fish food. Like floating fish food. Catfish food. And if they have it, we're going to stock up on it so we can keep the feeders full, keep them bluegill full so they can have lots of babies. And then our bass can eat their babies. Look at all that food. We better load up while we can, so we'll probably fill this cart pretty darn full. Oh, remember when we bought one of these things? Oh, where'd it go? Remember the corner wheel thing? Were you there for that? You weren't there for the corner wheel thing. We made a, it was a, like a Ferris wheel, but with corn, we, at the ramp, it didn't work. Anyway, let's get this food loaded up. I don't know how we're fitting any grain. This might be a two cart trip. We got some fish food loaded up. That is five to 250 pounds catfish food. I think, yeah, 50 pound bag. Oh no, we only, I guess, we got like one or two bags of animal grain. I think we might have a little bit left. So we got some fish food, hopefully little kitty cats. Oh yeah, I said bluegills, but it's also for catfish too. We've got a feeder, one down at the cabin pond, and then we've got one up at the main pond. So that's kind of what we're gonna do, is try to fill them up and keep them full for the summer. So that way they can come up and munch and kind of get them dialed, have them get fed in the mornings, in the middle of the day, in the evenings, all that stuff. So anyways, let's go find some some animal food. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. What's the difference between 12 and 10? Oh, 50 pounds and 40 pounds? Maybe? Why would they? 12 sweet feed and 10. Because this isn't usually the brand we get. Is it 12% protein or something? Look at that. How did I know that? 12% protein. So it's more protein. Well, we're, we're, we're beefcakes here, folks. We're not getting a little protein. So we're getting 12%. I would say, oh God, that's a... I got it. All right, well, we'll get a couple bags of this. Oh, cart's getting okay. run away. We should be good to go. Shoo! We made it back from the store, folks, and we got the fish food for the fish feeders. So we're going to fill this one up first, and then we're going to go to the top pond. But I do want to, I want to turn them on and see if any fish come up. That's going to be the biggest thing is to let these, that we got one move right here, and we've got one at the top pond. So this pond, if you guys are new here, this is the cabin pond. I want it to be our catch, clean, cook pond. So we've been taking some small bass out of the big pond and putting them over here. But mainly we want to get some big crappie, big walleye, big bluegills, the good eating fish in this guy. And, oh, catfish too. Can't forget that. So this food is supposed to be for catfish and bluegills. Bluegill. I mean, there's some catfish in here. Where we put a handful of them in here. So there may not be much activity. I'm honestly thinking the next pond, the other one, so stay tuned. The top pond is probably going to have a lot more explosions and stuff eating the food. But let's get this sucker filled up, turned on, and uh, see if any of the fish are hungry. Boom! That held probably 75 ish pounds. We'll see, how, we'll see how long that was. I haven't programmed one of these little guys in a while. Lock her on up so them Rickies can't get in. Oh, sheesh. She's working good. So we have a one feed time at 7 a.m. for three seconds. A feed time at 7.05 for six seconds. Feed time at 10 a.m. for three. 10.05 for six. Two o'clock, 2.05. Five o'clock, 5.05, eight. And that's it. I'm gonna test run it for three seconds. Oh, oh it's going. It says, stand, it says stand back with an exclamation point. Let's see where the feed goes. It should shoot out down this way. Oh God, here we go.
That wasn't bad. Not too bad. I think we need to angle a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, just a hair. So that was three seconds, so that's not much food. One, oh. two, yep, three. There. Try that. Oh, hang on now. Is that. Oh, geez. did it catch? Uh oh. She's leaning. That should be it. All right, that was only three seconds. You think that's enough? I think it was supposed to be like 7 a.m. and then 7.05, so like it just throws a little bit. Then it gets the fish excited, and then once they're swarming, then it like five minutes later, it shoots out for double the amount of food. You don't want it to go to waste, obviously, it's wasted money, but you want like the fish to hear it and have time to swim across the pond and that second feeding hits it. I don't think it's too much. Let me try six seconds. So we got three seconds, six seconds, three seconds, six seconds, three seconds, six seconds, three seconds, five seconds, and then at 8 p.m., there's six seconds. Let's go ahead and do a six second just to see how much food gets thrown there. Okay, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. This whole thing is covered. You think we might need to get rid of one of them feedings? The other pond, I wouldn't be concerned. I just yeah. don't think there's that many fish in this pond yet. And you don't want to overdo it. All right, we might want to take a couple of these out. So let's go ahead. All right, so feeding. I like the morning one. So we'll do we'll do a short mm -hmm. and a long at seven. 10 is a three second. So let's keep the three second, but let's get rid of the six. Dude, you can have this thing go for 25, 30 seconds. Th one minute. Imagine that thing ripping for a solid minute. So there's a 2 p.m. We could probably take that one off too. Now we've got 7 a.m. at three seconds, 7.05 at six. We have a three second at 10 a.m. And then we've got nothing again until a six second, 2 p.m. Let me change that down to a three second. At 5 p.m., we're gonna go three seconds. And then your last one, six seconds at 8 p.m. And then that's it for the day. She is programmed. I didn't see any fish busted you. Oh, uh, no. It might, I mean, the catfish in here should should munch. We don't have a large volume. So that's honestly quite a bit of feed. We might let it rip for a few days. And then if I come out and throw some feed out and nothing busts, we might crank it down to like two feedings a day until we really can get this place loaded up. I just don't want to waste the money, obviously, on the food. And I don't want to like just throw a ton of food in the pond and let it get all nasty. So the next one should be more exciting. Let's go to the top pond. My shoulders are not built for this. Woo. My shoulders are not designed to make those movements. Oh, look at all this bluegill right there. Oh God, that scared them. They definitely just got scared. I wonder if they remember from last year. How good of memory is a fish have? Oh, oh, look at them all. They're checking it out. Dude, it's like an aquarium. It's so clear. Look at that. They're curious. Oh, 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 one ate it. They ate it. Oh, he spit it. Oh, what the hell? He spit it back out. What's the strat there, Jim? You didn't... Oh, he ate it. The other one ate it. And I saw him eat one. Dude, this is crazy. How many bluegill we have in here is honestly insane. We've put a lot in here. We've managed it a lot. They're eating it. Oh, he spit it back out. You think it's like cereal? You don't just pour a bowl of Captain Crunch and start munching. Like, rip, rip to the top of your mouth. You That's know what I'm saying? True, yeah. Like, maybe it's the same strat. Like, let it get soggy a little bit. Yeah. Dude, there's so many bluegills. Oh, oh. Oh, he ate, he crushed it off the top. That one, oh, he ate another one. He's going off, he's going off. He understands the, the assignment here. Look, look, look. Oh, oh, dude, they're crushing. Here's a little bit more, buddy. There you go. See, once they start seeing their friends crush, it's it's game over. Look at them, dude. And then imagine throwing in a little Guggen Nightcrawler. It's like the easiest fishing ever, I love this. This is so crazy. Oh, they're going off, boom. That one has just been on a tear. He's been eating like 10 of these things. Oh yeah, he's gonna be jacked. He'd be getting swole, this little fish protein. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw a little tester to throw it out there and see, cause the catfish are probably a little further out. The fish food floats, but it does slowly sink. So it's like, you know, once it sinks down past these bluegills, I bet the catfish are gonna kind of slurp whatever's left of it. Let's go ahead and give it a rip and see how far it shoots. All right, give it a five second test run, fellas. We've got like eight or nine feeding times for this sucker, since obviously there's plenty of fish. Holy crap, look at what's going over there. Yeah, I'd say that's a lot of food. That was six seconds. That happens like five times a day. When you look this up, I think it's like if there's any food left after I want to say 10 minutes, then you fed them too much. So like you should throw it out and within 10 minutes, all the food should be eaten and gone. And if there's any left, then you need to scale it back until basically all the fish in your pond that like this food should be able to consume it within 10 minutes. And if they can't, you're feeding them too much. So I'm guessing I'll probably be feeding them too much at least starting. But I mean, they're still, they're munching. I mean, we're bringing these bass in. I don't know if these bass like these pellets, but they're definitely interested. There's a ton of little bass that are ripping around right here. We actually last year didn't have that many small bass like that. So those must have been last year's fry that have gotten pretty good sized. I mean, they're swimming around pretty good. The catfish eventually should come up and start kind of rolling on it. Right now it's midday. So I mean, they're probably not doing too hot coming up. But I think the idea is I'm going to keep them on a high feed for three or four days. They should have it dialed by then. And especially like those early mornings, the 7 a.m.s and like the 8 and 9 p.m. ones should be pretty crucial as well, which I have those set for like the six second ones. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and see. I mean, if I come out and there's just fish food floating everywhere, clearly it's too much. But we have 
thousands of bluegills in here. I mean, you're seeing like a 0.03% of the amount of bluegills in here. They just haven't all figured it out yet. This was day one of feeding. So you gotta kind of get them trained to the time and stuff like that. So anyways, we got them taken care of and fed. Let's head down to the animals, get them taken care of taken care of, nope, Karen's not here, any. taken care of and fed. And then hopefully we have the same result feeding the fish in the mini pond. Except we're not gonna be feeding them pellets, we're gonna be feeding them actual minnows. Stay tuned. Shoo! Well folks, now it is time to get these suckers fed. Dale, that cast coming off in a couple days, Dale. Just a, hey, Rick, Jeez. easy there, pal. Dale, a couple more days, my guy. And your, your legs should be back in action. Just no climbing fences, Dale. You just, no, about, just did it again. He about broke the front leg. <laughs> Pedro, what's up, my guy? How you do? Okay, sounds good. Let's get these guys fed, and then we gotta show you. We set up a little sprinkler system just to keep the pigs and everybody else nice and cool in this hot summer. So we'll go in there and we'll show you. Ralph likes to dance in the rain a little bit. It's like the soapy car wash kind of guy. That's 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 oh, big yeah. that's big daddy Ralph. So good. let's get these guys fed. Hey, get some food. We got it. Come on over here. Come on. Greg! Greg, what are you doing, buddy? Look at Big Daddy Greg. Greg. Get some food, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. No. Oh damn, he's getting your ass. He's targeting me. Hey, Pedro, quit fighting. He's trying to get you too. He's ain't messing with me. Look at him, look at him. Pedro! With all due respect, <laughs> yourself. Oh, is that backhand? I little heard it land flick, in there. Flick of the wrist. Pedro, <laughs> quit harassing. Pedro, quit harassing us. Bro. Pedro, Pedro, hey. No, he knows you're the turkey slayer. That's why. You're trying to get payback. God, dang, Pedro, listen. <laughs> I will throw. You may throw you over the fence. I'm letting you roam free. Maybe we'll get lucky and a raccoon will get you. I'll put you on the other side if you want. No, no. Boom, just like that, animals are fed and taken care of. Now I'm gonna go show you guys our little sprinkler water park system for Ralphie. Big, big boy Ralph loves it. All right, folks, we're in the animal pen. Before we get these uh, little fishes fed, I was gonna show you what we got going on here. Ralphie, come show everybody what you like doing. He's munching, he's, he's getting a snack real quick. So we're thinking, we're like, man, it's so freaking hot out here. You know, they have the pasture. Oh, Steve and Llama, you guys not want grain? You missed the grain train, Steve. What are they doing up there? They're content in that shade. We are getting them sheared soon. I know it's probably hot with that fur on it. The, the shearer lady person guy, actually he's a guy. He couldn't do it until, I think we're probably three or four weeks out now still. So, um, what is that? He's in there. Quattro, what are you doing, buddy? No, oh God, no, don't get me. Are you trying to stay cool? You're tr why don't you get in the water? Probably, we're trying to get him sheared too. This poor guy, he's he's probably too freaking hot now too. The sheer guy, he had to postpone a little bit. Come, why don't you get, you wanna get in the water? Go, why don't you go get a drink? Go get some grain. He didn't even hear us. He was I think he was taking a nap in that little corner there. He was hanging out in the shade here. It was quite a bit cooler in here. We probably could take a couple of these off to air him out, but it, like I said, it's tough. That wool on there is obviously really warm, but the little spring, come here, Ralphie. Uh -oh. Ralphie, come on, hey, come on, Ralph. Yeah, come on, show it, let me show everybody what you can do come on ralphie loves the sprinkler so we put a t-post in with this little drizzle nozzle tuber thing we have it constantly going i might turn it down just a little bit oh hey how you doing ralph you trying to get a drink but he's parched we'll dump this and get some clean water in here too every day with the sun it gets all algae Hey, you're dripping on me, buddy. It gets all algae filled. So what we, that's the other thing we do is we dump this out. So this is constantly going. It's ice cold water that goes, and you can open this thing up. Like It's like freaking Wisconsin Dells out here. It's just constantly raining. That way the, the pigs have mud. The animals can come in and get you know a drink and stay cold. We're, we're trying to do what we can. If you guys have any suggestions on what to do to keep animals cooler in the summer. I mean, obviously they have shade. They have lots and lots of shade up in there. So we're trying to get some water. I mean, it'd be ideal if we could move this water to the shade, but there's not, unfortunately, any trees really by this hydrant unless we ran some hoses, but if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Ralphie, so uh, he's not doing it right now. He's just. It ain't going nowhere. It's gonna be all right, pal. Show him how you get in there. Some days I'll come down and he's literally just soaked. Like head to toe, he's literally just soaked. Whoa. Get in there, son. Get in there, yeah, get in there. Show up, oh, okay, okay, you don't want to. Okay, whatever, anyways, that's what we've got going on. Like I said, let me know if you guys have any ideas. We're done, animals are fed, they are taken care of. It is time to go get the mini pond bass, I guess and some bluegill, fed, hopefully hand feed them with some live minners. Stay tuned. Shoo, 
well, folks, this is the moment you're waiting for. It is time to feed the fish in the pond. As you can tell, water clarity is not mint, uh, but the, the string algae is gone. And so this fountain's not running because this is really, really low. So we're going to fill it up with water. We'll do this, you know, off camera. I know you guys don't care. You just want to see these suckers get fed. And we've done enough yipper yappering. We'll get this thing filled back up and we've got some new like filters and bags and stuff that we need to get connected to like all the system in here to keep it clean. But isn't it those bass are, bass are cruising around. So the last time we really fed these things, I think it was the crawfish. We threw some crawfish in here and they didn't really eat them much, but ooh, are they dead? Oh, there's some that are alive, but not many. You think they'll crush dead no, ones I still? I think they'll still crush dead ones. Let's try a dead one. All right, here you, you ready, fellas? Oh, what? He ate it right away? Are you serious? He understood the assignment here. Oh, we got another one. Oh my gosh, dude. They're hungry, They're hungry. Dude. And they're crushing the dead ones. Let's throw, oh. Oh, well, he's gonna get freebie. I'm gonna find an alive one and see what they do. There we go, here's a big alive one. Big alive guy right here. Oh my, he didn't, you didn't even know if he was alive. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh. Oh my god, they're jumping literally out of the water. Oh, they said no, we want a live one. Oh, done. Done. Oh, oh, what are you guys getting picky now? Oh my gosh, dude, they're still munching. Oh my, dude, it's auto. It's literally, oh my gosh. Oh, dude, they're hitting top water. They're literally just busting. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm pissed that these things are dead. They're still eating some. Oh, here's a couple, here's an alive one. Check this out. Oh my, done. They don't even have a chance. Dude, this is wild, bro. These things are literally on egg. Oh, he's, oh, they're still crushing the dead ones. The thing about largemouth is like, they may not be hungry, but if they see their buddy trying to go get food, then they just go crunch it anyways. Like they, they're just straight up predators who are super like territorial and they get like jealous of one another. Like, so they could be totally full right now, but they're, dude, they're munching. Oh my gosh. All right, let's start a feeding frenzy. I got a bunch of alive ones right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're swimming around now. Oh, that one. Oh, they're still crunching. They're still. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the bluegill. The bluegill smoked one. The bluegill ate one. Oh, my gosh, dude. They're going crazy. Dude, they're just munching away at these things. I wish the water clarity is better. We'll get it figured out, folks. Don't worry. We're going to add some fresh water and get some cleaner put in it. So next feeding video, you guys will be able to see better. Hopefully, you can see pretty good right now. All right, we got you guys on Mondo Vision. Now, let's see if they're. Oh, they might be full now. Oh, no, we ate them. Oh, yeah, they're getting they're getting a little full now. Well, if you guys can see a little bit of the Mondo Vision, this does have a polarizer on it, so you should be able to see an okay. Uh, I mean, it's not super clear, but dude, these things are going off. That makes me feel so good. Like we've had these fish in here now for, I don't know, what, a month or two? And, you know, we haven't really been able to see them feed because there's just been so much algae and we've thrown in minnows here and there, night crawlers and crawfish, obviously, to make sure they're not dead. But now that it's like wide open, dude, they go off. We've probably put fed them like, I don't know, at least 50 minnows so far. And they're even the bluegills are eating. Them. So, so far, that's pretty good. We do have a bunch more of these guys. They are unfortunately dead. I think, I still think they eat, they'll eat dead ones if they, if they need to, you know, they're not going to pass up the meal. They're just, they're a little bit full right now. So anyways, there you have it. We got the bass and some of the bluegill in the mini pond fed. If you guys want to see us feed them anything crazy, like we tried to get a hold of some goldfish, couldn't find any, but we could try throwing in some lures. We could try fishing. Let us know what other content or what other maybe species should we stock in the mini pond. And I promise we are going to get this water cleared up. We, we're working on it trying to get the right components to get it all cleared up so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below hopefully you guys at home enjoy today's video catch up and peace